Hey everybody, Tom Sparks with Sparks Media Group. Uh, today we're going to do a Matterport 3D virtual tour of this house. It's a little over 2,000 square feet and we will be using the Matterport Pro 2. We're going to see about how long it takes to do this. So I've turned on the Matterport and I should be connected to the network, which I am. Now we're going to hit new job. We're going to label this. And we're going to begin. Now, if you're not familiar with the Pro 2, uh, it's a camera that Matterport came out with years ago. I don't know the exact release date. Uh, and this camera uses infrared and photogrammetry uh, to measure spaces and provide a 3D tour. Infrared is very sensitive to UV light. And so a limitation to this Pro 2 camera is that it cannot do outside spaces in sunlight. You can do outside spaces when, there's, um, when it's overcast or at sunrise or sunset, but there's, it kind of limits you know, what you can do with it. Uh, and so they've since came out with a Matterport Pro 3 camera, which uses LiDAR instead of infrared. And with that camera, we can now do outside spaces. Now, I've done a Zillow 3D tour of this home. I've done an iGUIDE 3D tour of this home. I've done a Matterport with the Ricoh Theta Z1. Now I'm using the Pro 2. And I will be doing a tour of this home using the Pro 3. Uh, and that's a little extreme for this house, but I'm doing it so that I can get some nice comparison videos to show the different quality, you know, based on the different cameras. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do so because as I release these videos, you'll be able to see them and compare the quality. And I'll put links to the tours in the descriptions. You always want to maintain line of sight when you're doing this. So you want to know, the camera has to see where it's been in order to know where it's going and align itself up. So you don't want to have the scans too far apart. Now what I'm going to do is time how long it takes for me to hit the start button until we come back with an aligned scan. So let's see, we're going to hit the start right now. That was 19 seconds to scan. Oops, another seven seconds. To, uh, do, do we got the prompt to move the camera. And then another six seconds for it to align. The reason I find that valuable is because we'll be able to compare that with the Pro 3 and see what that is. Let's do that again, because I hit the button a few times extra on that. All right, scanning's done. 
That was 20 seconds. Okay to move camera. That was 7.3 seconds. And to align it, that was five seconds. So just under 30 seconds. Now we always want to maintain line of sight, like I said. And so I'm going to kind of circle this furniture. And as I'm doing it, I'm also going to mark windows and any mirrors. So we have a window there. We have a mirror here. Now if you watched the other video using the Theta Z1, you'll know that I made a comment that I don't like how this mini map looks on the Z1 or using the Z1. It's kind of jarbled up and a little hard to, it's not clean like this. Get one more in there. Now, a couple things I'll show you about using this. Let's say you accidentally get in the scan. So I'm standing here in front of the camera and now in the back of the camera, but I'm not gonna move and I'll show you how to handle this. So we'll look at the preview, and there I am, my ugly mug. But I don't want to take down the value of this listing for the agent, so I'm going to delete the scan. And that's how you do it, pretty simple. So it's a good rule of thumb to check every few scans just to make sure you're not in them, or if you think you might be in them, to double check and just delete it and continue on. Uh, you want to keep in mind reflections on uh, pictures, mirrors, windows, that can all capture you. Mark this mirror. And we'll do one more over here. When doing a Matterport 3D tour, you want to try to get rid of the black areas on the mini-map, which is right there. And you want to try to fill that in as best as you can. Now, a con of using the Pro 2 is that the doors need to be set before you get to where you're going. And I say that to say that this closet right here, we're not going to do it because if I scan right here, which I've done, and then if I open the closet door like this and try to rescan, the camera is going to see too much change in the environment. And so I'm 98% sure it's not going to handle that well. So when I'm using the Pro 2, I don't typically scan closets unless they're already open. We don't scan in rooms unless they're already open, and that would include the garage as well. Uh, it makes it a little challenging when doing areas that have tight spaces, and you'll see that upstairs in one of the bathrooms. There's a door that when you, you have to open it to get to the shower, but it also blocks the shower, and I'll show you that.
Now, this camera, your miles are gonna vary on how far you can go in between scan points. Uh, I think you can go maybe 15 feet, 20 feet. Uh, but that wouldn't be a good tour experience for somebody looking to buy this house. Uh, so we keep the scan points kind of close. Now the Pro 3, you can go much further. I've actually tested that and I've went 115 feet, I think, in between scan points when I was scanning an outside space. Uh, and I have a video for that. I'll put a link in the description to that video. But um, again, that's not a very good tour experience when you're trying to show a space to have to go every 115 feet. It's kind of far. Um, so I think the advantage of having a Pro 3 over a Pro 2 in that regard is the speed to capture is quicker with the Pro 3. And we'll test that out when I do a scan of this house using the Pro 3. So just marking the windows here. You always want to mark on site if you can. Just because you're here in the house, you know what it looks like. And you can always reference it if you have a question about what something was. When you get home and you try to do it, you can kind of slow down the process. Now, 
again, with Matterport, we want to do on either side of the doorway. So I'm doing one right here, and then I'll do one in there when it's time to go in there. Okay, we have first floor done, but we need to do the stairs to get to the second floor. So I'm gonna set up the tripod on the stairs and we're gonna make sure that it's level, as level as possible. And anytime we're doing over really four stairs, uh, that would be considered a new floor. So I did not do a new floor going from here down to there because that was only two stairs. Uh, but we're going to have to do all this on one floor and then when we get up there, that'll be a second floor. So I'd like to do every two to three stairs.
I was getting a couple of camera unstable errors. And the reason I was getting it is because this worked its way out right here. So I tightened that down and we're good to go. So now we're at the landing on the second floor. So I'm gonna make a new floor and we'll continue. Uh, in bedrooms, decent size or small bedrooms like this, um, again, we're not going to do inside the closets, but we want to do at least a couple scans. So I'm going to do, so 33 I did on one side of the door, 34 was on the other side of the door, and I'm going to do one in the middle. If there's furniture in here, you're going to have to work around the furniture. So if there's a bed right here, you're going to have to do, you know, kind of a horseshoe around the bed, but it's empty. So we're going to do right in the center. Uh, now... We can get away, I can't see myself in the reflection, so we can get away with staying in the room. And we're just gonna circle behind the camera, like so. And as long as we keep circling, we won't be in the scan. As you're circling, you wanna stay away from the base of the tripod so that you don't bump it. Now this doorway is going to be problematic because when it's open all the way, it blocks the tub. What I'm going to do is 
close it a little bit at an angle. We'll see if we can get work around it. In this instance, I would probably recommend using the Theta Z1 or the Pro 3 versus the Pro 2. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is make a kind of a pros and cons of each and put that out there. Because these are really just tools and there's several tools for the same job. You just have to know what you need to work the most efficiently. So this gave an alignment error and I think it's because we moved this door slightly. So I'm going to put the camera back here and we're going to keep the door a little closed, a little more closed. Let's see if we can work around it. Okay. So we'll put the camera there. Now we gotta get into this shower toilet area. So I'm not gonna touch the door. I'm gonna put the tripod there. We'll see if we can get around it that way. Now we're going to open the door, put the camera in, and put the door back where it was. I think at one point there was a recommendation on Matterport's website to remove all the doors from inside the house before scanning, which I think is a little unrealistic. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to remove all the doors to have somebody come in and photograph or scan my house. So we do what we can do.
Now, if you look, you'll see this black area right here. And I'll show you how to deal with that. This black area is where the sunlight's hitting the floor. And again, this is using infrared and it can't handle sunlight. So what we're gonna do to fix this, to fill this in on the dollhouse and on this mini map is we're gonna do a 3D scan right there, not on top of it, but a little close to it. And then once this aligns, we're going to switch to a 360 capture and we're going to do a 360 capture. You would use a 360 capture with the Pro 2. Typically, if you're outside uh, in sunlight, uh, you want to show the outside spaces so you can do a 360 capture. Um, and I'll show you how to do that a little later on. But we can use it in this case to fill in this black area. So what we're going to do is it's going to pop up on the bottom here as a 360. And we're going to place it on the map. And it tends to put it off kind of in a weird space. So we're going to put it right on top of the last 3D scan point we did. And then we're going to align it in the way of the room. So the desk is right here, the window's down here, the closet's there. Once we have it placed, you want to zoom in, click off it so it's not highlighted, and then you want to click on it so that it is highlighted. Once you have it selected, you want to hit Convert to 3D, and it's going to use Cortex, which is Matterport's processing engine to convert the 360 to a 3D and you'll see that it now filled in this black area. So that's how you handle that. And then you can always just hide one or the other. I don't know if they've changed this, but Matterport has said if you use any 360s on a tour that you convert to 3D, you cannot order a floor plan from Matterport. And again, I don't know if they've changed that or not. But that's what the rule of thumb was back in the day. We're going to go back to 3D scan. Um, so if you needed to order a floor plan, there's uh, various vendors that can make floor plans from Matterport 3D tours. Uh, one of them is Home 3DS and I'll put a link in the description, home3ds.com. Uh, you can get on their website and order several different floor plans, a black and white floor plan, a color floor plan, a 3D dollhouse floor plan. You just put the Matterport URL in, and I think their prices are generally better than Matterport's for their black and whites. Matterport doesn't even offer a color or a 3D.
Now that we're all done inside, we'll go outside and do some 360s. And I'll show you how to place those on the tour. So we'll do a couple around here. The first one we're gonna do is right outside. We're gonna switch back to floor one. And we're gonna click on options and then 360 capture. And then we wanna make sure that we're out of the view. And I can see myself in the reflection of the sliding glass door. So we're gonna come around the corner Again, I'm not going to do this whole yard, but I'll do a good enough portion. Once we have the 360 downloaded, we're going to hit place on map. And then we're going to move it in the general area that it was. There you go. Now, I'm not in the reflection of the windows, so I'll stand behind the camera. One thing though, that my reflection will be in the shot. So what I'm gonna do is stop that, come around the corner, and start it again so that my reflection is not in the photo. I'm sorry, not my reflection, my shadow. general rule of thumb is with the Pro 2 that you can do about 3,000 square feet in an hour. And this house is a little over 2,000 square feet and it's been 42 minutes. Place on map. And this one's way off there and I'm gonna put it kind of where it goes take the house and there you go now we'll go do some front yard shots we'll kind of keep it similar to the Zillow tour we'll do a front door and then front yard I'm gonna stand inside. Place it on the map. And we'll come out to the front yard. Do one shot in the center of the front yard. Again, making sure that I'm not, my shadow's not in the reflection.
And there you have it, guys. We have done a Matterport Pro 2 3D virtual tour of this house. Uh, from start to finish, it was just under 45 minutes. I'm going to power down the Pro 2, and I will upload this to Matterport for processing. I'll put a link to the tour in the description of this video. And I'll put a link to the other tours I've been doing of the same property in the description as well so that you can compare apples to apples, uh, bananas to bananas, however you want to call it. But yeah, if you like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you hate it, give me a thumbs down. Some people have commented that my videos are a little long, but I find that they're informative and you can always fast forward if you don't like them. Uh, if you have any questions, Comment below if you find the video useful, please share it. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do so. I'd appreciate it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.